What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 101 of the Chumpcast. Things are back to normal this week after our live 100th show. Thanks again to everybody who came by or sent along congratulations. This week, we delve into the second season of Netflix's Emmy-nominated Glow. We also begrudgingly discuss the new Titans trailer and DC's streaming service. And I give a mini-review of Boots Riley's subversive comedy, Sorry to Bother You. Tom Cruise is back, as if he ever left, in Mission Impossible, colon, Fallout. In honor of that, we want to hear about ridiculous stunts that Tom Cruise actually would not attempt on a movie set. You can find us on all social media platforms at the Chumpcast. You can also call or text us at 847-920-6107. If you leave us a good enough voicemail, you might hear yourself on a future episode. If you want to support the show, you can find our merch at thechumpcast.com. We always appreciate kind reviews, subscriptions, and ratings on Apple Podcasts. You can also shop at our Amazon affiliate link at thechumpcast.com slash Amazon. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've been awake for 74 hours awaiting the new Aquaman trailer. Fuck Batman. Nobody says fuck Batman. I'm sure the Joker said that once or twice. Joker doesn't cuss. He doesn't have to. He's just being crazy and shit. Yeah, I don't know how I felt about that trailer. And yes, we're talking about the Titans trailer that just released today. It's Friday. And um, Boo. we have San Diego Comic Con. but okay. Oh, it is Thursday. Fuck. I wish it was Friday. <laughs> did you like anything about this trailer? Yeah, there were a couple of things I did like. I like the way Robin looks. I like the fact that it's going to be pretty gory, probably, and super dark, which I'm All not. Right. Brick, every time I ask Mark this about whether a movie satiated his unquenchable bloodlust, he's like, why do you always ask me that? Am I validated here or not? Confirmed, you're a psycho. You're Mark. a huge it's gonna psychopath. Be a bloodbath. <laughs> I'm gonna bathe. In I never the said blood, blood from this. TV I never said bloodbath. Bloodbath blood blood McGrath. Blood. What movie you is that from? Is that a new word that you can't say? No. Well, I, everyone talks about. Oh my God, Marvel on Netflix. It's so gory, but yet it's so good. Like Daredevil and all of that. And yeah, CW doesn't get into that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, they're on cable. You can't. Yeah. So I'm excited to see that they're kind of following the path it seems like with the netflix series that we're getting with punisher and daredevil and i'm just curious um as to how this gore is going to work out in titans and it's titans for one which is pretty hilarious in itself that robin's going to just be breaking legs like, okay. okay okay so this isn't going to be part of the whole justice league universe i have zero idea nobody knows all we know is that we got a trailer i it makes zero sense for dick grayson to say fuck batman He's the only Robin that would say fuck yeah. Batman. Tim Drake would say it. Jason Todd. Jason would say Todd it. would say it. Damian Wayne would definitely say it. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm going to interject here because I had a comment earlier talking about Bloodbath McGrath. <laughs> and uh, I would just a little trivia for you guys. What is Bloodbath McGrath? What is he from movie wise? Who's he the villain in? I don't know. I what have you're no idea. About. He's a villain in, in, a, in a famous movie starring Will Smith. Oh, is that uh, Hancock? No. Hancock? Okay. Starring Will Smith. Hitch. No. There's a scene where he has this neck thing on, and it he's running through a forest, and like this giant blade oh, is coming. Oh, Wild Wild West. Wild Wild West. With Cue Jackie Chan? Cue the music. No, that's- That uh, wasn't Jackie that's Chan. That's with Owen Wilson. There's another West movie with Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson. Yeah, there was. Shanghai- Shanghai- Shanghai Nights. Nights. But it wasn't Nights. It was no, Cowboys. Shanghai Noon. Noon. Shanghai yeah. Noon. Yeah. That's how you bring it back. Shanghai oh, Noon. Makes you want to watch Rush Hour for some reason. It was Kevin Klein in that movie. It wasn't uh, Jackie Chan. They did oh, get a sorry. couple of Razzies, though. Remember the Razzies, Mark? Remember when you guys were like, what the fuck are the Razzies? Yeah, what what are the Razzies? It's, what are the Razzies? It's the opposite of the Oscars. They make fun of shitty movies. Uh. That's why Adam Sandler has so many of them. We should actually like do a live screening of the Razzies. When are the Razzies? I think they just kind of release a list of shitty movies. <laughs> Some like, guy just came up with it. Pretty much. But they do have a website. We have a website. Why don't we do it? <laughs> <laughs> because we don't have the traction that the Razzies do. Yeah. Does anyone want to come on the Chumpcast and do this for us and create the segment? Go ahead. Anyways, Titans. I don't care. <laughs> and I'm still probably going to play. I care. I'm still probably going to pay for this fucking DC service. Ah, I don't, don't know. Don't even say You, you were kind of hyped about it. As in you were like, oh, I'm going to see it. 
I want to see it anyway. Like, we should just do an episode on it. Like, I was lock it in. Yeah, but before I was going to pirate it. And did you see the demo they did on their comic service that you could run through your TV? No. Is it cool? It, it's kind of cool. Like, it does panel by panel, like, leads you to the next one. It's kind of cool. That's pretty badass. I didn't know about that. I'm for sure buying it now. Panel it, well, it's panel. I have to give you credit because you were right about the price. Eight bucks a month or a 75 a year. Yeah. It's uh, they're undercutting Netflix. So mm -hmm. the word is that you can also download their content like you do with certain Netflix shows. Also, apparently you can pre-order a subscription right now and you have a chance to, to win, win two tickets to Aquaman premiere. To the Aquaman premiere. Yep. And that's kind of what I predicted, too. I said if they were smart, they would do a full year deal where you get three months free. And they're giving them, I think, two or three months free. Plus, they're getting entered to win Aquaman, two Aquaman tickets for the wow. premiere. Marketing totally listened to that episode and was like, that's a good idea, Mark, and just ripped it from you. Yeah. Mark. Editing. Or is Mark quietly the the marketing team for DC? That's why he's always so hyped about that, yeah, shitty movies. Say, is that why he's always defending DC on this show? You guys, you guys. DC is like right it's in the realm of Marvel. Like, Gar like, lock it in. Like 10 years ago. Only 10 years ago that The Dark Knight came out. That was it. Guys, I cannot fucking wait for the Aquaman trailer. And it, it was 10 years ago. No, it wasn't today. It was yesterday, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. That the Dark Knight premiere. Oh, I'm getting a bone. Why aren't they doing a screening of that in Chicago? I am. Again? I am so mad because I shared it and I didn't. I obviously didn't read the whole article. Too long. Didn't read. That's just me in a nutshell. But I did finally click the article I shared on Facebook, and I'm looking at the cities, and it's like Atlanta, New York, fucking. Really, Atlanta gets it over Chicago. The I hubs. It was filmed in Chicago. I know. That's why I'm fucking pissed off. It was fucking filmed here. Actually, the opening scene was filmed on Jackson and LaSalle, but who's talking? But anyways, fucking seriously, you're not going to fill. you're not going to have this in Chicago. Make a plea in the Joker's voice to the people who decided to not put it in, in Chicago. The ones who are never going to hear this. You know, <laughs> you're not going to put it in Chicago. You might as well just fucking kill your health. Wow. That gave me dark. chills. <laughs> that was a hybrid joker that was my joker impression like if i were to be the joker that's how i would talk interesting but also you're being serious yeah why so serious did you see the name for the joaquin phoenix joker movie i did not see the name i saw the date when it's coming out it's like october it's 2019 like yeah october also it's going to be called joker Okay, I did see that. I just didn't know that was the name. I just thought well, they were talking about the movie. Sometimes less is more. Shout out to McCourt. Peace. Except not in this case. Yeah. They're, they're, what do you mean? I, I guess did see in terms report. of like Joker movies that are releasing, there's a bunch of them. Yeah. That's why it's, you got to go simple well, with in it. In that case, fewer is more. Yes. You know what's great about superhero movies? As much as we're not that hyped up about them or we don't care about them, we're still going to fucking see them because 100%. they're superhero movies and they're our favorite types of movies. I've spent 30 hours of my life watching the CW shows. <laughs> just what the because, fuck am I doing? Just because they're characters you know and love yeah. from just the comics. I like The Flash. Yeah. Uh, I did see something else, though. Apparently, Francis McDormand of Three Billboards Outside Ending Missouri fame. We got it. Turned down the role of Joker's mother. She'd have been real good as the Joker's mother. I don't think the Joker needs a mother. She would have been good as Martha Wayne as Flashpoint Joker. Crazy that storyline. Yes. If she Full was the Joker, have you ever heard of that story? I've heard you guys talk about it, but you don't care. But anyways, yeah, no, I do because I'm like in, into it, but I don't want to hear it because it's going to come out soon, right? No, it's not. In the Flashpoint universe, the alternate universe, Batman Bruce Wayne is the one that gets killed in the alley, and that makes Thomas Wayne become actual Batman. And Martha Wayne goes insane and turns into the Joker. Wow. Yeah. Which Super I think good. is actually a better, better story than. Oh, it's an awesome Batman. story. Because she loses her son, right? And she just turns exactly. into a crazy. Turns into the Joker. That's a good reason to make the Joker. Big family dispute. I just made that. that up right here. Nice, dude. You had me <laughs> no, fooled. He didn't. No, he didn't. DC, DC is like doing copyright DC infringement. Over here. Yeah, no, he he's didn't. like, that's copyrighted. Yeah. That's I'm actually been you. made. So it wasn't you, Ryan. Don't ever lie. Guys, for the first time in probably 50 episodes, we didn't do a dumb question this week. I'm sure we just we can come up with one just by being naturally dumb. Yeah, but we don't have listener oh. submissions. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, it's tough. Here's your listener submission right here. But you're a co-host. You're not a listener. You're you just gave me the finger. That's not a submission <laughs> at all. Deal with that reality. What is wrong with you? 
I thought it was fun last week. It was a blast. For people to see what a clusterfuck it is to actually put an episode of this together. Yeah, yeah dude. I me just, and Mark are doing a majority of the legwork. Good lord. I just posted that video of me taping the cam, taping my phone to the uh, the beer can, the Brought Bush you Light by beer can, trying Bush to Light. set up Instagram Live like an idiot. Hey, oh, yeah. We were going to stream this, weren't we? Yeah. So I taped a, a can of Bush Light to a tripod because our, our our Amazon tripod thing for the iPhone didn't come in the mail to hold it in place. So I'm like, okay. Just need something stable, so I'll use this bush light can and tape it to the tripod. And it actually worked. Until the piece from Amazon actually did come. <laughs> it came, came like 30 minutes later. Classic we, Amazon. Do you think people were turned off by seeing how the sausage gets made? Ew. But yes. And in, in what? <laughs> Last week at the live show. Sausage? What are you talking about? You've are never you heard serious? that expression? How the sausage is made? How we do the show? How we record? Oh. In our, it's a colloquial, colloquialism. Colloquialism. Define colloquialism. Uh, It's a common saying that everyone knows what it means except for you. (laughs) Wow. That's the most in your face definition to ask for ever created. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right. What was your favorite part about episode 100? When it was over. Okay. Or maybe finding the tent. Because that was kind of clutch. What about Robin's 20-minute story about being, (laughs) being taken by the cartel and faking an asthma attack? That was pretty good, too. Forgot about that. Did you listen? I was not listening. I heard bits and pieces of that. (laughs) Yours felony story, I think, was more interesting. Just because it was shorter. (laughs) Well, that it was a felony. Oh, yeah. Breaking into a McDonald's. You broke into McDonald's. Allegedly. Allegedly. Wasn't me. It was the other guy. And it wasn't even for Szechuan sauce. No, for real, though. It was pretty cool to have. I mean, we had 20 different people that showed up. Yeah. Yeah. That picture didn't come. Filtered in and out very quickly. Considering that we didn't really have. A, sh- a venue, true, and it was raining. Yeah, the rain really put a damper on things. It's a huge buzzkill. I know you hate ha- you hated having it in your backyard, kind of, but I actually like the vibes in the backyard. It was solid. I love my backyard. It just it makes me feel like I have that much hosting responsibility more to pay attention to. Why? Because it's not really my backyard. I rent this place. Like if something gets fucked up, it's on me. What's gonna it, get fucked up? Like it's host. You don't want to be room? the host. Being Did a host you just watch Rick push a beer can off the fucking yeah. table? I don't know. People are dumb. It's a miracle that he didn't burn our house down last weekend. It's true. That's why you don't give me matches. And we didn't. That's why the house is here. It's simple math, but you don't want to be the guy with the host. I think the best part was that people kept showing up with booze, particularly Bush Light, just because they know. Sponsored by Bush and that's Light. actually what we're drinking now is leftover Bush Light from last weekend because wor- we killed that fifth of Maker's Mark. Yeah, that's what we make the camera stands with. You that's know, it's attached to a Bush Light right now. Check our Instagram. And we got iced. I forgot about that. I'll post that video later this week. Oh, Jesus yeah. What a, I forgot I had that yeah. video. That was a real mean move. Who Who'd ices somebody? Honestly. What Someone the fuck? from 2009. But yet I was kind of pumped when we got iced. I'm like, okay, I'll do this right now. I dominated that iced drink. It- Went down smoother than I remember it being. I kind of like getting Smirnoff iced. Ooh. <laughs> Someone's just literally... You, know, you never give it to the guy who's begging right, I'm, for I'm it, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're going to get, like, packages in the mail of just Smirnoff ice warm. Until uh, I just kill myself. I think myself. that's a good idea for us to do to him and, like, make him record it when he has to chug all of them. What about Malort's? We fucked up heavily by not getting Malort's all I morning. I think... All the liquor stores and jewels and everything around us fucked up because they didn't have any. Who doesn't have Malort's? We're it's in Chicago. Chicago. Staple. It's a Chicago staple. Swedish, su- Swedish, Swedish liqueur. Swedish. What is it called? Is it from what are you Sweden? Talking about? It's like a Swedish. Is Swedish it really? I had no liqueur. fucking idea. Yeah, that's you know, commercial. I knew it was Jepson's, but I didn't know it was Swedish. Yeah, it's Swedish. There's like a Swedish something liqueur. There's it's like. Two S's, they're hard to say. There's a commercial. You ever seen the commercial for it? I, the parody commercial I have. Yeah, that is the commercial for it. I don't remember all of it. We did fine without it. We had plenty of booze. And we got so Everybody drunk. showed up with some. We got pretty drunk. And you know, if we had Malort's, we would, uh, we would have made people drink maybe a third of that bottle before everyone just got up and left. We would have made the trivia and harder. You know, we would have ended up drinking it <laughs> for some stupid reason. Because I had a bunch of. Malort's. It's like getting stung in the throat by, by a scorpion. Malort's. It's like getting a paper cut and a hangnail and dipping your hand in rubbing alcohol. 
Oh. Malorts. It's like scheduling a dominatrix for your esophagus and forgetting to establish a safe word. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the best one. Malorts. Yeah. It's like cutting your big toenail too thin and knowing that you're going to get an ingrown toenail in about a week or so. Mm. And you have a marathon in three days. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's the, that's the response that you everybody has. A marathon when you only walk on your tippy toes. Ooh. Oh. See, that's the thing, though, is if booze is going to taste that bad, it should get you really, really drunk. And it doesn't. It's not that high in alcohol content. It's just napalm for your throat. Ooh. Your butthole, maybe. I don't, Apparently, one in terrible. ten. One in ten people like it, which is just the contrarian oh, asshole. One in ten people. Yeah, that's like nine out of ten dentists recommend this. What the other one's just being a dickhead. What does it taste like? I've never had it. You've never had Malord's? No. Satan's butthole? Like, what does it taste like? Like a gypsy curse. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't... It doesn't taste like anything else. Maybe... Jet fuel. Okay. <laughs> If you were actually spilled gasoline all over your body and you had the fumes ingested into your nose, that's what it tastes like. You know how bars have like those bar mats that they pour shots on? Yeah. And like all the excess booze kind of spills into those and they pour them out at the end of the night? That would taste better than Malort's. It'd be like that if it was half Jaeger and the rest of it was just like a mixture of other booze. Oh, there's definitely a hard gin in there. Yeah. It's like getting bullied in the fifth grade. That's like, it's like <laughs> these are all from it. the commercial. Check out the commercial. It's actually funny. fifth grade is a prime time for bullying. Not going right. to lie. I don't know how we got on this topic, but we're going to go give away our question for next week. We'll take our submissions live if anybody has them. But next week, Mission Impossible 38, starring Tom Cruise and Simon Pegg and a bunch of other people. Ving Rhames is in it. Henry Cavill has a mustache. Which we that ruined very Justice much know League. that ruined, ruined my fucking movie. Guys, Tom Cruise is notorious for doing his own stunts on crazy movies like this. And I think it's because he wants to die. He's like Scientology at the end of the tunnel. What would happen I if he survived? died? Would he go to Planet Galgamech and just live with it? You know Ugamush? the story. Do you, do you want us to go into the full story of <laughs> no, his, Scientology? His thetans get spread out over everybody else in the world. I don't know. Uh, anyways, for this. We want submissions from our listeners for a ridiculous stunt that even Tom Cruise wouldn't attempt on the set of a Mission Impossible movie. That's a small window. Tom Cruise would join. He would jump on a rocket ship like he did in that jet plane and go to the moon without a spacesuit. He did some pretty crazy shit with a helicopter for this movie. I sent you a bunch of these. Do you remember any of them? Because I'm totally drawing a blank. He wouldn't do stepping on Legos. (laughs) Like if he had to go through like a bear trap with his feet walking instead of walking across hot coals you're walking across a room of legos yeah he wouldn't do that he wouldn't denounce his actual religion can i pause here he wouldn't do a movie where he's not the coolest guy in the world (laughs) amazing there's no way (laughs) tropic thunder he's still pretty he's He's still he's uh, he's got the power complex yeah he's the biggest power complex of all time (laughs) also that was probably my favorite role of his ever i think so too now that yes now that i'm thinking about it Definitely. Right. So small. Yeah, he wouldn't do a role where he actually showed he off his height, taking a bunch of Ambien and then getting on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Going to a family reunion in the Deep South. Yeah, fuck off. Anyways, those are the submissions we want for next week. Send us ridiculous stuff. You can find us on all social media at the Chumpcast, or you can call or text us at 847-920-6107. Leave a voicemail, and you might hear yourself on a future episode. Do it now. Great. We we got some comments over there. I want to see who the hell is in. I just I I just shared our episode. By the way, we're dumb. Andrew and Brent Priola are here. We're dumb. We're drunk, and we're live. Let's go. Darian has a response for our Tom Cruise question. Yes, already. (laughs) He wouldn't do a Papa John's commercial. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. I like that. Thanks, Darian. Thanks, Darian. Did you see the article where he, where Papa John was saying he said the wrong thing when he said he was gonna he, when he wanted to resign? He How said, "I accidentally said I will resign when I wanted to say I'm not going to resign." That happened, That's and then some guy's like, "Nope, you took your hand off of it. You took your hand off of it. Locked and loaded. You're fired. You fired and, yourself." And it's, here's what I really don't understand: Is he now finally eating a shitty pizza because he gained like 42 pounds in the last couple months? He's a notorious drunk. Goes to Louisville games. <laughs> Just is a piece of shit. I mean, if you're eating Papa John's pizza, probably five days a week. Yeah. And if you think it's Papa John's pizza is the best pizza, which is what he's been claiming for years. Ugh. God, get that shit out <laughs> of my you're going to be a fanf. It is what I'm, it is. Yeah, I'm offended by that notion. 
fun fact about her Instagram, actually, the one of the posts with the most engagements was when I w- used to take some quotes from her previous episodes and just make like a like a real emotional type quote Instagram frame whatever bullshit. And the one where you said "fuck Papa John," there was like 142 people liked it, and like 60. 62- I think that was <laughs> might have been from me actually. No, he said no Fuck because Papa I had John. a tirade about Papa John. Yeah. It was okay, good because there was a guy who did shrooms on our floor in in, oh, in college. Yeah, I remember yeah. that story. who was hiding a, a a fake knife behind his back and got taken out and randomly just said, "Man, fuck Papa John," just I like think, the person. I think the majority of a <laughs> human kind just said, "If you're live, what up?" Everybody just hates Papa John. All right, let's do the news. Papa John is live with us. <laughs> Thanks for joining. John Schnatter. All right. Walmart is trying to start a streaming service because obviously we need another one. And they want to keep failing and losing to Amazon on every aspect possible. Well, what Would, should they do, Ryan? I, I don't know. Stay just, in your lane is what I you think have trying to say. You have brick and mortar stores. They're now competing with Amazon Prime. They have two-day shipping without a membership. Amazon is jacking up their Prime membership cost. I feel like this is just not of an area that you can get into. No. Why go to the store when you can get Amazon Prime or you can get a Ju- Jewel Osco is now doing delivery with same day delivery, which is like Dude, you kind of got to lean into it. closer and closer to Wally, where we're all just in those fucking scooters and we're fat as shit. It's called living the dream. I am super surprised that Jewel Osco is still around, to be frank. Kroger's the big one. They bought Mariano's. Whew. I thought it was just going to be Mariano's, uh, Trader Joe's, and Whole Foods by now. I'm really surprised there's still Jewel Osco's. Hey, well, man. technically, they're just Jewel now. They're not even Jewel Osco anymore. I don't know what Osco's Osco out. meant. Osco saw that. Was Pirate there a guy ship. named Osco? Was there Maybe a girl named Jewel and a guy named Osco that made it, Jewel Osco? They just like is made produce? Dominic's? I don't know. A whole bunch Dominic's of them own gone. each other. Uh, there's Dominic's. really only like three grocery stores. Shout out to the Piggly Wiggly, though. That's up in Wisconsin. We don't even have those here. They almost made one up north by my house uh, near Lincolnshire. What is Piggly Wiggly? What are you fucking pointing at? I'm pointing at is the that, Piggly Wiggly. Is that a Piggly Wiggly? That's what a they, Piggly Wiggly. That's a Piggly Wiggly. What do they Wiggly? sell at Piggly Wiggly? Like only jerky sticks it's and like Slim Jims? It's like a convenience store. It's, 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 it's a not dope a full grocery store. store. Wisconsin it people it's love jerky store. and a stick of cheese. I've never seen one that was a big one. I've only seen one that are I've only big seen one that were like gas stations. It doesn't. How did we even get onto this? Walmart. Fuck you. Yeah, we we don't want your shit, Walmart. They have the Walmart big bucks to get the quality content on there, though. I guess. Bring me good movies. I'll come stream. I was going to talk about the Titans trailer here, but we kind of already talked about that. Yeah, but that Raven chick looks lame, by the way. I Raven, guess only Raven really- is not the Raven I know. Why? She didn't seem bitchy enough. She, yeah, Raven should be she a didn't big seem old depressed bitch. enough. She wasn't depressed enough, but she is a bitch. Yeah. That's it's, fair. I guess she is getting her body taken over by like some sort of demon, so I guess you can't be too thrilled about it. But she seemed too young. She seemed honestly. a little whiny. She, I mean, even Starfire, like you see nothing with her. You just see her using her powers. Yeah. Barely see what she even looks like. And Beast Boy Beast Boy reminded me of Hank McCoy, aka regular Beast from the X Men, but X Men, but like back in two thousand three. The young one with the glasses and shit. Like, am I even interested in how they even get their powers if they're based in realism? I don't even know. Like, the one girl's getting attacked by a demon. That's fine. They're just like, yeah, there's a beast guy and there's a, a bitch who can throw fire. Like, ah, eh, we're over it. Are you upset that there's no uh, cyborg in this? I didn't know that. I just figured they weren't going to show him in the trailer. Yeah, he I'm wasn't in the trailer. Pretty sure he's getting his own show. Okay. But yeah, no is cyborg. It a sh- is it a show or is it a movie? Well, he can come show. later. He's supposed to get a movie, but also a show on DC streaming service. But it would be a shared show like this is, where it's not just a Robin TV show. It's a. I'm talking about Titans. Yeah, Titans is a show. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a TV show, dude. Okay. Did you even watch the trailer? I watched the trailer. I thought it was for a movie. No, it's a TV show on like, DC streaming service. Okay, I was like, that movie sucks. Wow, we spent enough time on this. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Mark, what does the name Kate Kane mean to you? Kane the wrestler's sister. Or Batwoman. Yeah. Not Batgirl, Batwoman. Batwoman. Uh, she has a series Probably. order for CW, so we're getting another DC CW show. If it happens, we've got an order. doesn't mean it's going to happen. But it will be the first superhero show focused on an openly gay character. Kind of a big deal, yeah. but also it's a CW show, so they have a very niche audience. People who like it love it, and everybody else is like, this is boring as for shit. For CW? 
oh, super niche audience. You go to any Comic Con and you find yourself really surprised at how many diehard CW fans there are there. And the lines to see these people, yeah. ridiculous. I'm like, who is that guy? They're like, oh, he's in a, a DC uh, X's of the Universe, whatever, the new. Uh, you know, we talked about this. Charlie Cox was at C2E2. He plays Daredevil on the Netflix show. Yeah. Do you have any desire to meet Charlie Cox? No. Zero. He Next looks super question. boring. I mean, he seems cool, but I don't want to fucking wait in line and pay $45 <laughs> to meet him. That sounds terrible. Does sound like a waste of time. If anything, I was going to meet the, the two guys from This Is Us. Oh, That's you just would. Me. Did Kelly even end up going to C2E2 this year? She did. She went Saturday with me. Oh, that's right. No, see. I remember. Yeah, when you were Spider-Man. We were trying to get, uh, she was going to do a photo op because she didn't buy one online. And we just, I'm like, well, just come with me and see if you could get one there. And she could have, but they, it was pretty expensive. They were asking like 200 bucks to get a photo op with both that's of them. That's fucking oh, that's obscene. pretty cool. Psych. What do they do with that money, too? Does it go to charity or does it just, just no. go in their pocket? That's just going in their pocket. They don't make a lot of money. For doing like a CW show. Yeah. For Unless it, it gets yeah. really big, it's then true. maybe. Yeah. But they're not movie stars. They're not making 50 million a movie like The Rock does. I still think that's a He's lot of like fans to pay million. for two seconds with you. To that get might have been on the year. I don't know. I think I was on the year. Okay. But our best man alive, perpetual best man alive, was named most lucrative, I think, movie star of the year. Is Ooh, that what they the called Rock it? The Rock is lucrative. He made the most money. It doesn't matter. Good. Netflix last year announced they were purchasing the Miller world, Mark Miller's universe of characters. Today, they announced five new productions on either TV shows or movies. So if you know Kingsman or Kick-Ass, you know Mark Miller's work. We're getting Jupiter's Legacy, which is superheroes from the 1930s, but it's present day now, and they're dealing with their shitty asshole kids. So, I am sold immediately on that premise. You love the 30s. I'm a, I'm a period piece guy. Wait, what can you I say? love the 30s. Who loves the 30s? I like the 30s. What happened in the 30s the besides Depression. the Depression? Yeah. yeah. Besides the Depression, I don't know. People sucked in the 30s. People were just But like, what was so great about Prohibition? The, yeah, yeah. I guess Prohibition I was kind of cool. It was an interesting time in our history. And it's that really was like the eight. first time when like photos came to fruition, okay, too. Man. Sorry. We're getting people eight episodes of this. Here. Sorry. <laughs> We're getting American Jesus, which is a young kid who realizes that Leto. he's Jesus reincarnated. No, that's just somebody who thinks they're Jesus. Oh, Jared Leto. Okay. We're six, Do six you six believe episodes that you can walk on water? God damn it. Shut oh. up. No, do not start singing because you start singing, you never fucking stop. Finish up. If I knew that song, I would have joined in, but I don't know that. <laughs> Huck is basically Superman. We're getting a movie about this. We're like, cuck, fucking, I don't want to see that shit. Lame. Superman's a, bo- a bozo. <laughs> He's a boner. Empress is about a woman escaping her intergalactic overlord shitbag of a husband. Sounds is interesting. That, is that the IMDB definition of that? <laughs> Was that the it's, description? These are all comics. <laughs> oh, comics? So these are all comics that are being adapted by Netflix. That are into shows. Well, Netflix, last year, if you listen to me talk, I zoned three minutes ago. <laughs> They bought the rights to all of our all of Mark Miller's work. Oh, that's right. You do tend to drone on, though. I will say that. That's literally my job as the host of this show. Keep droning. Keep going. Sharky the Bounty Hunter is about <laughs> wow bounty wow. hunters, and that's going to be a movie. I thought that was going to be like the the coastal version of Dog Sharky Dog the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> it's like, actually street sharks, but they're bounty hunters. Wow, wow. I'm I in would, on that. I would so watch that. Mark just got a boner. What are those? What, what are those? Uh, Mice from Mars, biker mice from biker Mars. Mice from Mars dude. They need to collide those worlds. No, they absolutely don't. <laughs> absolutely do. Can you not put up the beer on my eye? Don't worry, you didn't wave to anyone. There's zero people I'm alive right now. Can, wait, can I, can, can, I, can I get a beer too? Actually, <laughs> damn, what is this Duffy's dog on your cup? You've never been to Duffy's. Why does the dog look super depressed? Like you haven't thrown it a ball in eight months. That dog know, does look like it's fuck. been not <laughs> fed. It looks like you've just been yelling at it for the last three like years. And not it. Why is this me? I didn't make that cup. Ah, damn it. Ryan hates dogs because he owns this Duffy I cup. I fucking love dogs. Dogs are the best. Except Khaleesi. She's a bitch. <laughs> right. The most loyal, best dog of all time. Only to you, which means her judgment is terrible. Yeah. Judgment's great. <laughs> Were you about to make a song out of that? No, but uh, I do have a little funny interjection that we used to do for uh, getting people beers. If someone was like standing or walking away, you'd always ask them, oh, hey, while you're up, can you like grab me a, a beer? 
it, this evolved over time. So like, hey, while you're up, do you mind cleaning the entire kitchen? And you're just like, <laughs> we had a rule where you kind of had to do it. <laughs> That's really fucked up, and I would not partake in that. <laughs> but it was like, uh, it was a rare an occurrence enough where it wasn't like a big hassle. I would have told you to go. Hey, while you're up, up, will you just go to bed? I don't really want to see you anymore. Thanks. <laughs> But we had people over. It was, I was graduated. Kevin Garner, shout out to KG, He's loyal fan. On. He'd left eight Doesn't hours matter. Ago. He'll listen to it. He is, they're in the front lawn of my college house. They're playing beer darts and they're all on these furniture outside. And so I look outside. This is after a huge night of partying. It's still super early. And I see beer cans are all over my front lawn. And I look out the outside and I'm like, Kevin! There's a spider under your chair. And he stands up and I'm like, hey, while you're up, do you mind cleaning up the entire front lawn? Did and he he's like, it? he's like, oh, wow, that was good. Just did it because he's the man. <laughs> he, but it was just like the altar. He didn't even know about the rule. He just like was he thought that was like a good move to do. Wow. You're just a bad person. You're like exploitative. Ooh, nice. Yeah. No, that was absolutely 100 percent what I was going for. Mark, say exploitative. Exploitative. Nice. You're getting better. Exploitative is on point. Dick is Sean. Well, all right. Netflix owned teasers this week with their 1980s mall teaser for Stranger Things season three. Did you guys see this? No, yes. pumped for it though. What the frick? You got to this. You it has, send us notes. Just literally, just read the news anywhere. Yeah. You're the just, worst. Just, God damn it! I know I'm old, you but didn't the, see it either. You yeah, he did. Oh, yeah, he just said he did. Yeah. The mall in my hometown in the early 90s looked exactly like this trailer. The I one get mall. It. Yeah, yeah. with three stores it really wasn't a mall it wasn't even a strip no, mall. we have a, like a mall mall and now it's all closed down because nobody goes to the fucking mall anymore but yeah i live at I, closest mall to me was woodfield so that's an actual big mall it's like the second largest mall to the mall of america good story <laughs> anyways the only reason you would know this is stranger things is that you see steve at the end and he's he's working at an ice cream shop and he's dressed as a sailor, and you could tell he's miserable. I just, I love Steve. Steve's great. You know, he's, he's the, the best. He's done so much stuff with John Raphael. Who's that? They're actor? like best friends. They're best friends. It's amazing. Their Instagram is the best. Yes, absolutely. They're a great dynamic duo. Shout out to Drunk Erica for showing me that because I, I never would have found that. I never would have followed either of them. You have a John Raphael shirt, a yeah, matching one with grown. That's not, that's is that not him, him right there? As a person. This is literally John Raphael right here. But that's She's not how worst. he is as a person. Uh, I have some Keanu Reeves news. The best news you can have. Okay. Do you want the bad news first or the good news? Good news, he's a god. Next. Bad news. Bad news. You want the bad news first? He's not a planet. Hardball so, 2 isn't coming out, guys. The financing <laughs> for Bill and Ted 3 is apparently falling through, leaving the production questionable. I really would like to see this. So this is a little depressing for me. Kickstart that bitch. I mean, can't doesn't Keanu Reeves have enough that he can just finance this movie on his own? But doesn't he like give away all of the money he earns for movies instantly to like Sudan or some something? Like gives it away he, right away. His <laughs> sister died of cancer and he has a huge charity. You're really shitting all over my idea right now. Someone will finance this. Somebody will. Make Netflix. 100%. You are sitting on piles of cash. It's Go simple. finance this. It's Take not a that. cult movie, but it's a cult movie. Kind it is. Of. Yeah. Yeah, Take all that cancer problem. money and put it into Bill and Ted is what Ryan wants. People, Let somebody else take the cancer, cancer money and give it to Keanu Reeves. Not your problem. <laughs> to make him be a dumb idiot. <laughs> all right. Good Keanu news. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> we got our first look at John Wick 3, colon, Parabellum. When? Where? Emphasis on the colon. How? He's riding a black horse through New York City, downtown Manhattan. When? I don't know. When did this happen? This week. Fuck. Is it That's why we're piece? talking about it in the news. Where? In Manhattan. Why the fuck no. are you asking? Where was it released? The internet. Was it on the Re internet. Oh, it wasn't like Comic-Con or anything? No. Damn it. It came out like four days ago. Oh. It's on the dark web. <laughs> Keanu Reeves was riding a black horse through Manhattan. You know what? I'm people. watching Keanu Reeves. It might as well be on Pornhub. Wow. Can we just do a YouTube reaction of that small teaser and just be screaming the whole fucking time while it's happening? He's on a fucking horse! Ah! We got the name, though. Parabellum. From the Latin sic vis pacum parabellum. Okay, next. <laughs> Isn't there a type of mushroom involved in that? No. There's a mushroom with an ending called bellum. Okay. I know. Well, sic vis pacum parabellum means if you want peace, prepare for war. So this is... Portobello mushrooms. Portobello. Did you take Latin? <laughs> no. 
I watched the Punisher movie in which he <laughs> says this quote. That's Parabellum. even more nerdy. Like, if you would have been like, yeah, I did take eight years of Latin, I would be like, you're That's a nerd. That's nerdier than watching but, an but, hour-long movie. No, but now that you're like, well, I actually picked it up from Punisher and made me want to learn Latin, so I it's went back to the comic books. a really widely learned. used Latin phrase in the Marine Corps. If you read a book every now and then, you'd fucking know what this meant. That's true. Anyways, I, I feel like this means enough. for war. That is parabellum. So he's preparing for war. Okay, fuck you. Are you All right. paraphrasing that? No. <laughs> Same prefix. So suck it, loser. So when he's riding this horse, where's his dog? On the horse. Please tell me he's on the horse. He's not on the horse. Fuck. He's not carrying the. Like, Unless they're going to CGI him later. I'm not sure. Fuck. Since no one has original ideas anymore, Viacom is rebooting Rugrats. This includes a 26 episode season as In well as live action. Quote a live action feature film. Featuring CGI characters. Why? Because I miss the Rugrats. So what part of this is live action and which part is... Obviously, the babies are going to be CGI. Because hmm. you can't make babies say what you want them to say. You're just not a good this parent. This is going to be weird. Well, I'm not a parent at all. Or a good one, obviously, for that matter. Ooh, burn. I can make babies talk all the time. Wow, you hang out with a lot of babies? You diddler? You ever seen the movie <laughs> Look Who's Talking Now? Or Look Who's Talking To? Or Look Who's Talking? I think they should make a Nickelodeon live action where they combine all the Nickelodeon shows like Rugrats. Rocket Power. Rocket Power. And hey he Arnold. Fights. Doug. Hey Arnold. Doug. Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah. SpongeBob. Just like so Rocket Modern Life is just based in Australia and then you're just like yeah people from Australia look weird. <laughs> There's a cow. There's a fucking wallaby. Wow. What Way to like? alienate our Australian audience. <laughs> I what, love what, Australians by the way. What, what was, was the girl in the safari that lived in the safari with her family? The Hillsberries? Wild Wild Thornberries. Thornberries. Hillsberries. Smashing. Smashing. Nigel. There should be some fucking San Diego Comic Con news, but we don't have any yet. We're doing this on a Thursday night. Comic Con basically just started. I know we're getting a glass trailer tomorrow. Brick, you just watched Split. James Mac. He watched Split. Split. You just watched Split, right? That was one of the rare movies, like as an adult, I had I woke up like three times like Holy shit, he's there. Like, I had a weird, like, nightmares about it. It was weird. It wasn't really even scary, though. It wasn't scary, but it was just like being in that base. When he turned into the beast, I was just like this. This movie's fucked up. <laughs> like, I got to the, I got to that point and I watched it. I was like, not half asleep, but like enough to be in sort of already mixing into that dream state. And I, I was sleeping, but I couldn't take my freaking eyes off of it because James McAvoy was incaptivating. He oh was. my God. Incaptivating in isn't a word, but in he was captivating. I, I was in captivated. And Patricia. Yes, that, that and like the nine year old, and then all of a sudden, what's like, the nine year old's name? I don't remember. Oh, what's his name? It's it something, something ridiculous. British, like Simon. No, or, it's way more ridiculous. It was something stupid. I'm excited for this. I liked Unbreakable, and I really enjoyed Split, especially considering how shitty the trailer was. Do you understand what we're talking about right now? No. It's Unbra- un- you know what Unbreakable is? That's the prequel to it? Not not really? Yeah, you need to watch it. Kind of not really. Bruce Willie, you but need to watch it. You've seen it. the pictures yeah, come out. Yeah, that was such a M. Night Shyamalan little fuck you stab you to death. I yeah. loved it. I was like, I was sold. We got our first look at this. We see Samuel L. Jackson, Bruce Willie, and James McAvoy. So, Who's trailer tomorrow. Jacked. You know what? Maybe we should do a video on just all the trailer reactions. We'll get to that later. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about more psycho people real quick? Please go ahead. Charles Manson. We go that route, Charlie Man. Why? I saw a movie coming out directed by Quentin Tarantino about a TV actor and his stunt double trying to make it big in Hollywood during the Charles Manson murders, starring Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. And I was like, "Oh, that sounds like the best movie of all time." Quentin Tarantino. I don't know much about what. What? Who is Charles Manson? I know, like, he, I know he was, I've heard the name a million times, but he's like a psycho. He's serving a life sentence in prison. He was basically a cult leader, and it was in Hollywood. I, I want to say it was in the 70s. I could totally be butchering this, but he basically convinced people to kill people for him. And he had like oh. 12 wives, I'm pretty sure. And he like carved a swastika in his yeah, forehead. He He's really a psychopath. I got to piss. That's Bye, Mark. Bye. Yeah. So don't worry. We're not live. I, oh, I kind of got a pizza, God but forbid. God damn it. Fine. I'll carry this myself. No, I, I'll stay with you. Just the cast alone, it's like if you are asked to be in a movie and you find out the lead is Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, it's like, oh, lock this in. Give me a quick list. Incredible Keep movie. going through the list. Margot Robbie, Leo, Brad Pitt, Dakota Fanning, Al Pacino, 
Timothy Oliphant, which you might not recognize I his name, but he's amazing. If you he's justified hitman. Kurt Russell, go ahead and give, give me some names. If you give, list their movies, just in case people don't know who they are, people know who Kurt, Kurt Russell I mean, is. Kurt obviously, Russell, yeah, I was gonna say uh, James Marsden. James Marsden uh, in Westworld. Yes, he was Cyclops in the X Men movies. Confirmed. I'll give Burt Reynolds. Name. Obviously, Damian Lewis is playing Steve McQueen. Damian Lewis, Billions. Yeah. Uh, what else is he in? He's in that Terrace One Homeland. Yes. Tim Roth. You'd recognize his face. He's a, he's got one of those villain faces. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I just find that to be, there's just so many freaking stars. I'm looking down these lists of, the, all these names are recognizable, but you, yeah, the Emil faces, the, fa- the faces are everything. Bad movies. <laughs> he was in, like, Girl Next Door is probably his best movie. <laughs> Moving on. Do you have anything else you want to say about this movie? I just think that's coming out in 2019. Look just for the it. cast gets you in on it? Absolutely sold. Are you kidding me? Tarantino's been kind of hit or miss lately. Yeah, it's about a cult leader. I just, honestly, I listened to the last podcast on the left about the last show I listened to was actually about Jonestown. Ugh, so fucked up. Which is about a cult leader who convinced, yeah. he convinced 600 people to drink Kool-Aid full of cyanide and then forced 300 other people to do it against their will. At gunpoint. Yeah. And that that just like, the whole thing was, is a five-part episode. Super fucked up. Oh, my God. Yeah, very weird. What podcast is this? Last podcast on the left. It's super excellent storytelling, it, by the way. One of the most popular podcasts in the Midwest. I What's think. the episode name? Jonestown. Something. Jonestown. It's a five-part episode. Uh, it's called the Jonestown Massacre. Ooh, was there a Netflix series on this, or a Netflix four-episode series like one of those? Uh, no, I think you're thinking of Wild Wild Country. Yes, 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 yes. That yes. was a different cult. Okay, there are a lot of cults. Actually, uh, They're just as fucked up as the other ones. Post Malone on his newest album actually has a song called Jonestown on it, and it's real fucked up. Now that I know, I like listened to the album, and then I heard what he was singing about, and I was like, "Damn, that's a, that's a fucked up song, man." But it's actually like good. It, I think it's good. It's just like in a fucked up way. I think it's time for our next segment. Best, 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 best. worst, 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 the worst. Best man. He's the worst person in the world. It's Huge better because gang nobody on the left can, can hear this. Yeah, they, they can't hear what we're listening to. I don't even care. Only us. <laughs> All both of them on the live stream can't hear it. There's two people on right now? I don't know. That was just a guess. Oh. I have a, <laughs> there's zero. I have a litany of best or worst people or things or animals alive. Okay. Shall I? Go. Shall you? This is a submission from our guy Deck. You know Decker. He submitted the Virginia man who called the cops. After a guy set a quote unquote hard screen while playing pickup basketball at a health club <laughs> in Virginia. So Deadspin has been following this story so closely. Did he call the cops while he was still in the gym? No, after even the game? better. Oh, fuck that guy. So he didn't even call the cops himself. He went to the girl working at the front desk. It's like a uh, like a LA fitness. <laughs> like a seventeen year old girl. He's like, that guy Pretty much. set it's a hard it's screen. It's a planet fitness. Call the cops for me. There's video of uh, the cops like body cam. Yeah. And he walks in and you can tell he's just disgusted by this guy. (laughs) Despin has this. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's embarrassing. The only thing that I can say about this is the guy is not white. Like the guy that calls the cops is not white for once. (laughs) Because all these fucking stories on a weekly basis are these super privileged, shitty white people calling the cops on black people for doing normal things. Oh, like the lady that was calling about the uh, the kids selling lemonade. Yeah. yeah. Thank fuck. God this was not a white guy because I just would have been like, you know what? I'm Native American now. <laughs> Did not sing that right. <laughs> just fucking done with it. This guy tells the story like he was being a shitty pickup basketball player. Apparently, he was like going for a rebound and he elbowed this dude in the back. And the guy set a hard screen on him. And he leaves the gym and is like, I'm calling the cops. Dude, a hard screen? It wasn't even like a going up for the layup, like aggressive slap down where you break an ankle or something like that. Didn't even take his legs out from under him. Didn't even push him in the back. Just a hard screen. So you ran into him, you fucking idiot. Oh, my God. So you never know what content that comes out these days online. You you think this is legitimate. I mean, you see, like, I believe people would go as far to call the cops just to get views on, on Facebook. Et I'm telling you, dude, watch this video of the cop's body cam. The okay. cop is so 
annoyed that he has to be there. And he's so right yeah. because he should be doing literally anything else. It's fucking terrible. All right. I'll check it out. Do you have a best man alive? I do. I'm going to say Aaron Paul. He did a funny ass skit the other day where he came in on The Office. They had a bunch of different actors from different shows and they did uh, a quick 10 minute. I think it was was the Emmys last night or some uh, TV award the show. ESPYs. ESPYs. It was the ESPYs. Oh, yeah, the it was ESPYs the ESPYs. I was watching at ESPN this morning. Anyways, they did a funny office skit on the ESPYs where Aaron Paul came in. His whole part was just hilarious. And there's all these talks about him getting back together um, and doing a Breaking Bad reunion. Which Are you I don't talking think about his happen. Omaze campaign where, where they're yes. going to cook in the RV? There was some other article. I think it was on Entertainment Weekly where they were talking about. Do you want to take this over break because life. this is your best man alive too? Who, yeah. Aaron Paul? Yeah. Damn. I'll, really? I'll do I'll do Brian Cranston. How's okay. that? That's weird as fuck. And I didn't read your. Is it on here? Top of the list. Oh, shit. I swear to God, I didn't even read it's it. Okay. I was looking on my way here. And I'm like, this guy. Well, I posted a video of, oh, it's an Omaze. It's a charity event um, that Aaron Paul is actually sponsoring where you get to cook inside of the rv is that what you're talking about yeah that's no what yes about. but i'm mainly talking about how entertained i was with the skit he did on the office where they brought in a bunch of actors and he was pretending to serve creed meth oh that's right which was classic yeah i didn't see that i saw I, re- I remember that that was that's from a while ago no you guys have i saw it a while ago this. okay maybe not either way so Aaron Paul is is doing this Omaze charity campaign where he is like it's like an eight minute skit it's the most recent breaking bad content you could have he is given like a, a quick tour of like the RV and that's when Brian Craston comes in and he's like just been living in the RV. <laughs> it's 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 eight minutes of actual comedy, but they do a great job of pitching the charity. It's for kids that have been like abandoned or have been uh, something along those lines. You can either cook meth or breakfast in the RV. So did Brian Cranston come in in underwear or no? <laughs> no underwear as in he was in a robe and his balls were showing no. so <laughs> well, fuck yeah i can't believe you haven't seen it actually the, that's hilarious that aaron paul is actually just like your best man randomly no i love aaron paul and because of the fact i'm rewatching breaking bad not quietly one of my favorite series of all times of probably course. my favorite have you seen his show where he's the cult leader no i think it's a show on amazon amazon prime let me take a quick peek at this Rye Guy's back, our host. Hey, what's the show with Aaron Paul where he is the cult leader? The Path? The Path. The Path? Yeah, Confirm. it's called The Path. Is that on... Amazon. No, it's on Hulu. I have, I have Hulu and Amazon Prime. Got yeah, it mixed it's on up. Hulu. Nice. I've not seen it. I just thought of Aaron Paul. Thought I'd see what's up with that. If you guys have seen it. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So you haven't seen it either? No. No wonder he's missing Breaking Bad. <laughs> I'm surprised that neither of you mentioned Mandalay Bay for being... Massive pieces of shit. Go on. I don't they know. are suing the victims of the Las Vegas shooting that occurred last year, not for damages, but to remove their liability from Mandalay Bay. So it says, the lawsuit says, that the security company that they hired was certified by the Department of Homeland Security, and under a law that was passed in 2002, they are officially removed of liability because of this. I get this from a business standpoint, but can you imagine a worse headline than mandalay bay sues shooting victims nope zero percent because that's the headline that i saw and then it had like a quick couple of bullet points being like yeah we just wanted to sue a couple of hundreds of them so they don't get the the wrong idea just like all right you're preemptively suing these people that have that's in the- exactly what they're doing and they're not looking for damages but this is so nearsighted like, what the fuck are you doing no one in their PR department said, maybe you shouldn't do this. Yeah, this is a bad idea. It's Johnson, also, you're fired. These are also Vegas people, too. So I guess just heartless Sin City. But, don't. <laughs> ah, God damn it. Now I'm depressed. All right. I got a fun. I got a couple funny ones. I got one funny one and an eh one. All right. Eh. <laughs> Spit it out. Andy Yang, who commented on a Facebook post from Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq bought a yacht. Good for you, bro. Did I needed to see that on Facebook. But. He asked the public what he should name it, as if he's never been on the internet and he doesn't realize what a terrible fucking idea this is. Best thing of all time. (laughs) What he should name it. The best possible scenario for this is that someone asks him to name it Bodie McBoatface. And that's not what happened. Because Andy Yang pops in and goes, call it the free throw 
so you won't ever sink it. <laughs> oh man, that is so cold and so good. Good Just, for that guy. That's a power move. I was gonna say, oh, our dumb question should be, what should you name Shaq's boat? But that guy one hundred percent nailed it. And to Fred, we're done. Yeah, we're done. Here. I was gonna say the the C word. <laughs> the S E A W word. Arrested Development. Yep. Yes. Amazing. All right, I got one more. Mark. Are Jaguars mammals? They're cats. So no. <laughs> Thank you okay. for leading into that for once. <laughs> All right. Best worst mammal alive is Valerio the Jaguar, who has a badass name. In the New Orleans Zoo, he had a successful jailbreak and murdered five alpacas, an emu, <laughs> and two foxes. It's almost like maybe we shouldn't be locking up these apex predators in cages for people to come gawk at. And maybe if they get out, they wreak havoc. That's not normal behavior. And Jaguar just doesn't From get a loose Jaguar? inside. Yes, that's exactly normal no, behavior. For no. a I'm, ba- I'm going to back up the Jaguar in this one. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, it's not the Jaguar's fault oh, that no. they got out and murdered animals that they, they're made to do. They're hardwired they hunt for DNA. sport. Oh, do they? All cats hunt for sport. My Even cat- if they're full. If they're That's full, true. they've eaten a shitload. They still Even hunt domestic for sport. cats will hunt for m- mice and just fucking one hundred percent. Yeah, okay. I will that let does my I will like Khaleesi out. I like Khaleesi out in the front yard, and my cat will be out there, and they will like my cat will like lay in the grass and try and hunt Khaleesi. But Khaleesi don't take that shit though. Cats hunt o- other cats too. Yeah, they're cats fucking are, monsters. They're psychos. My aunt had an outdoor cat, uh, Fredo and Bandito. And they were Good brothers, cat. and they were the most badass cats in the world. What they would do is, is they would go find other stray cats or cats that just got out of the house, and they'll fucking they would just claw them up, beat them up. There was one time where my aunt walked out the back porch. They never they come inside real quick in like the winter to like warm up, whatever. But they're always outside. She comes outside, she sees Bandito looking up, and Fredo is up in the tree walking a cat off onto one of the branches, like planking it. Making it walk the plank and about to kill this thing. They're up like 40 feet up in the air. And this, the Fredo is just walking this other cat off of the branch, about to let it just dive to its death. Cats Classic. are psychopaths and we should not lock them up. Look, I love animals. I love going to a zoo, looking at animals. I would be totally fine if we stopped locking animals up and the only, like, I, I only saw videos and pictures or real life animals in the, in the wild. I think it's fucked up that we put them in cages. This is what happens. They get pissed off and they get out and they kill shit. They just kill shit. Do you want to see Emus a jaguar? are not small or nice. They're fucking vicious. And the jaguar just like slaughtered it. Jaguars are dope. They don't want to freaking kill something. You ever seen that video of the jaguar, the black jaguar that kills the crocodile in the Amazon? Yes. No. It just picks they it clean out of the water. Crocodiles. I want to see that. Monsters. The, they are monsters. The guy narrating was like, this is the first time in forever in all of history that we've seen a cat perform this kind of hunting. And it just fucking picks it right out of the river. God, dude, he just like puts his claws into its brain and he's done. Speaking of that, I saw an article as I was looking for some entertainment articles that St- Steve Irwin's wife was like, yeah, he didn't think he was going to live that long. When I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. well, he was going to s- going into pools of jellyfish just like. Oh, let me just take his thing out of his body. Literally, they called him the crocodile hunters, so... Yeah. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. What you gotta do is take your thumb and stick it up its butthole. It really (laughs) pisses it off. Let's see how angry it gets. One of my favorite songs. If I started calling myself the poison drinker, yeah, I probably wouldn't live for very long. Yeah, I'm not going to live here for very long. That's all I got for Best Man Alive. Let's get into our topic for the week, which is season two of Glow. Gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Is it gorgeous or glamorous? I can yeah. never remember. 96% on Rotten Tomatoes, 88% from fans. Season one is currently up for 10 Emmys, including Best Comedy Series, which it probably won't win. But it also has a Best Supporting Actress nom- nomination for Debbie, a.k.a. Betty Gilpin. Dominated. Or, what do they call her in this? What's her wrestling name? That is Liberty Bell. Thank you, Liberty, Liberty Bell. Bell. So this stars Mark Maron, Allison Brie, Betty Gilpin, as we mentioned, and pretty much a bunch of no-name actors. Is that fair? Very. I didn't really recognize anybody else. When we did that one episode for Best Upcoming Actor a- Actress, mine was, um, who's the larger girl in the show? Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. That's the only thing I know about her. 
Uh, and apparently, she's the great though. Britannica, the British girl, is like a singer, pop star in I England. I've never heard any of her songs. Yes, yeah, I mean that doesn't make her not a star, but she's a British star. So if you're unfamiliar, this is the story on Netflix. I should say so. Everybody has this. Everybody can go watch it right now, and I highly recommend you watch season one. And if you like it, go into season two. It's the story of an upstart women's wrestling league set in the mid to late 1980s in Los Angeles. They make it to public access TV and somehow like a regular kind of cable TV station and end up fighting constantly to get better ratings and sponsors and sell tickets and yada, yada, yada. And figure, figuring out how to wrestle in general, which well, they had no background Well, that's more in. season one. And I, I would argue that the beauty of this story is in the multiple conflicts between all of the people in the show. Mm -hmm. Even from episode to episode, it's just everybody hates each other for some point, but then they're all friends and they hate each other again. It's pretty good. But they have to do that because of the roles that they play, too. So, like, they're trying to make this show great. and main characters have this huge conflict as in season one first episode you find out that ruth wildler is having sex with this guy and it turns out to be her best friend's husband that does she know or did she find out like no she no, knew she knew 100 percent. yeah she's okay. a bitch yeah so she's a huge homewrecker and ruins this girl's life and so it just goes the roles that they have uh, how do i say this ryan how do i say this the roles that they have play against the characters is in like the the hero in the show is like the anti-hero in like their real life mirrors of their wrestling characters by the way darian is weighing in right now he has a good loves point the show darian shout out to darian what's up darian wrestling is just the background in this story in, in the show and it helps the story move along and that's right because the wrestling part is what makes them have to put their differences aside and actually get along. Otherwise, they're not going to get paid. Their show's going to get canceled. Yada, yada, yada. They're out of work. Exactly. And it, it also increases tensions, though, too. When they have to go one on one, sometimes they're a little more aggressive with each other than normal because they have that pent up anger. But I think making them face off and a lot of the times it's Liberty Bell and uh, and Beth was Ruth. It? Ruth. And yeah. Ruth facing off, which is Zoya. which is pretty fun to watch that because you know how yeah. fucked up the relationship is in the first season and second season so far. Yeah. In my opinion, this doesn't really pick up until the second fourth half. Fourth Mid episode. Yeah, the fourth kinda. episode is when they have uh, Welfare Queen visits her son at Stanford, which is another yes. one of those contradictory, like, she's named the Welfare Queen, but her son, she's, like, super proud of, like, over the top going to Stanford. She's helping him pay for Stanford, but like she's selling herself out as the welfare queen. But Which is great. A, a great scene. Makes you feel so much for them. Both of them. It's not just like she's embarrassed and he's embarrassed, but at the end he kind of picks her up. Yes, I agree. But then episode five kind of sucks. One, is that, two, is that where Liberty Bell sells her house in epi episode five? That That's was episode four. episode four. That was part of episode four. Okay. The second half of the season is so much better because episodes one, two, and three are just like, wow, is, are they going to do anything with this? Am I just watching this to watch it? I, I don't know what's going to happen here. In my notes, I have episodes. I have each like a little description of like the first of all the episodes. And then I, I have episode one and through three. What am I even watching? Why, why did I like glow season one so much? I like forgot about why I liked it. I binged it, season one like in one to two days. I was like, damn, this is actually interesting and actually funny. They jab you with with humor throughout the entire show. But the first three episodes of this one, I was like, oh, boo, worst thing ever. I, but I, it, I thought the first and second episode weren't that bad, especially when they go to the mall and do like the personalized intro or commercial or whatever they're I doing. I thought that was too corny. You I thought, thought it was 100 percent too corny. Well, that's the whole point of the show is because it's the 80s and that's all that television was, no, was super corny like that. I'm not saying that the. The showing was corny. It's, I thought it was, I'm trying to, sh it was like, you Ruth. think they're trying too hard at being corny? No, I thought it was Ruth making a move and then like Mark Maron being all butthurt because she like took a directive, a producive lead and just did it without his, I thought it was just a stupid dynamic that they had. That I get they what you mean. Get into part of the problem with this is that there are so many characters and very little screen time to go between them. Everybody has to have a little bit of backstory. You've got a couple main, more main characters than other characters, but some of the more unfortunate characters just have to deal with being constipated on screen, and that's their story arc. Not great. 
later in the season, once like episode seven or so, they start to like get into how they kind of have grown to uh, accustomed to each other. And like they built those relationships just like wrestling w- with each other. For example, episode four, Liberty Bell's losing her shit. Her husband's secretary calls and asks what kind of bed they have, which is like just a fucked up thing to, to even request. But Liberty when you Bell, like your bed, especially you do like since your bed. they see each other like all the they, time, they hand their son off between each other. He could just ask her then. Exactly. And it's so fucked. She loses her fucking shit and sells everything in, in her entire house and forgets to pick up her child from daycare. And she is like just about to fight welfare queen. And they're like in the back, they're about to get announced and like Debbie's losing her shit. They have this moment where welfare queen, like she acknowledges like, oh yeah, well I've done that too once with my kid. And just like they have, they 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 share that moment. Like a family. Exactly. And at that, they're about to go out and like wrestle each other, which is like such a weird thing to have. Like we're, they're sharing this moment and then they're going to go fight each other. They do a good job with the the dynamic there. I get it. But. Some of the subplots and storylines, just there's not enough there to make me care. For example, Justine, Mark Maron's daughter in this show, could not care any less. Don't fucking care. Her story is dumb. Her character's fine. I just don't care. You need something to change the path of the story, which finally takes place later in the show. Uh, You can only care so much about how they feel and the, the tensions between all the characters. You need a physical action to actually change the pace of the show. And that's what you get towards the end. But that was why I I thought the beginning of this whole show was so slow in the beginning. I actually disagree with you. I like Justine's storyline because it shows the softer side of Mark Marin, who is this psychopath who has been notorious for like making people quit because he's such a demanding director that he like he doesn't give a fuck. He's like, I'm going to do this my way or it's literally the highway. And to have him finally sympathize and like care for somebody gives him a softer side and makes him for when he does actually like show that caring side of him that gives it more of an impact sure i guess i don't know i didn't care about that i understand that you did what about bash's storyline with his former butler fucking good i forgot who even was honestly does he even show up in this season i know i don't think okay well this is how little i cared about justine this story was more compelling to me (laughs) than justine's was just because it's the 80s there's an AIDS kind of storyline there that makes sense. This was very much quintessential 80s where everybody's doing coke to the extreme and everyone's terrified of AIDS because they don't know what it is yet. Okay, Mark. AIDS and coke? AIDS and coke. It's Mark's high school all over again. (laughs) But you also made a really good point earlier about flipping the roles of the heel and the face in this. So we've got Ruth and we got Debbie and Debbie does everything under the sun that could possibly make you hate her so much there's even though you kind of feel for her at certain points like when she's worried about her son and her ex-husband's being a piece of shit she still does terrible things mostly to ruth she takes out on ruth a lot and ruth and ruth is try- is the villain in the wrestling show right and she's, she's the heel take- yeah, and she's, she's the, the heel. one that you end up feeling for yes and no i think debbie does such a fantastic job of losing her shit like as an actress in that show that you do kind of feel for her because her life was ruined. She was on top at one point and now she's just doing this wrestling show and she's like fighting for every amount of power that she possibly can. Like she's going to be the producer of the show, but they don't respect her. Like yeah, it's a guy thing. I had, we had a meeting. It was a guy thing. You were just like weren't involved. Like they, they jab that in a lot. So I feel like she's justified in a lot of actions that she does, but she's also just like, damn, you just, that was the wrong thing to say. You're a piece of shit. Well, we talked earlier about how much better of an actress Betty Gilpin is than everybody else in this show. Like Marion is good. Alison Alison Brie Brie. is good. They don't hold a candle to her. She's so much better. The way like her facial reactions, as well as like her body motion, her body movements, but along with just like what she's saying, it, it's it's captivating, I would have to say. By she's the, an amazing actress. She's losing her shit. By the way, we instantly spoiled season two. <laughs> it's okay, though. It's been out for a month. We'll put in the show notes. We won't. Brick, do you want to rate this? The I would give it an 8.5. Wow. I was sold. They do do, I feel like they do do a lot of social do issues you. in this. 
they bring it up not subtly, but they bring it up in a light way where they again jab you with humor throughout, so it's not like overbearing the reactions AIDS. that they have. Yeah, AIDS. Oh, sexual predators in Hollywood. Oh, that was fucked. They talk that about was- a lot of social issues. I think to get the point across that even though this is taking place in the mid eighties, late eighties, it's still kind of relevant, especially when um, you have Liberty Bell talking about how. No, no women are getting directing jobs and she's she's arguing about all that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of points throughout the show where, you know, they're trying to get break an the idea, glass ceiling. Get a, yeah. Break the glass ceiling. Get a point across about how problems that existed back then. You can't yeah, forget were, that they're still existing now. There were so some aspect. few female directors and yeah. producers back then. Exactly. And the, the, they're taking that front on and they're taking both stances of it, too. Like Debbie was like, yeah, you should have just like tried to pretend like you were gonna fuck the head of the entire what is it called the network let's stop there and we won't spoil it anymore mark do you want to rate this i'll give it a seven okay i was torn between a six and a half and a seven damn i'm gonna give it a seven because this show knows how campy and ridiculous it is and if you want to see that skip this skip to episode eight when it's basically just an episode of them airing their actual show that they've been making it's Kind of hilarious. You it's, get an inside look at the like the, the inner workings of what they're actually producing. The shitty production value. It's just hilarious. They the storyline so hard into the eighties, but they lean into it, and that's what makes it great. If it was just campy and they weren't aware of it, then it'd be like a five. But this is what makes it a seven plus eighties music and rampant cocaine use. Yeah, the score. Seven. The score was also was also pretty good too. Like even when they were at like. The, the, the clubs and stuff yeah. clubs and dance yeah. they always threw in those solid 80s things that i was like kind of just like bobbing my shoulders to you know you know what i'm saying so that's glow season two do you guys have anything else to add we're we gonna move on i don't think so all right i'm gonna give you guys an option now because i will shut up if you want me to or i can give you a real quick review of sorry to bother you no let's hear that yeah, yeah. let's hear sorry. go ahead because i'm not sure if i'm gonna see this one or not but it really you 100 should okay you should also smoke a blunt first uh, I don't do that. We're on live. Not a theater. Is I saw it in theaters yesterday. No, I'm saying it should should you see it in theaters or can it's you, not can you necessary. Wait? But I don't know. Support Boots Riley. You okay. got movie pass, right? That's fine. Yeah, yeah. So how would you? Who would you see it with if you were to see it with somebody? Oh, or is it, or is this someone who's into weird shit like you are? If I would have taken Erica to this movie, she would have been like, "What the fuck did you make me sit through?" So let me just give you the breakdown here. This is written and directed by a guy named Boots Riley, who's a rapper from the early 90s. Now he's getting into writing and directing, obviously. 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. 65% from fans. I'm going to take a stab at this and say the discrepancy is because this is so goddamn weird. You either really have to enjoy weird shit, be high as fuck, or at least be in the right headspace for it. You can't, like, if you had a really hard day at work and you went to see this, it's not gonna hit you the right way okay the, it's, it's a star-studded cast we got lakeith stanfield and also if you've seen the trailer for this you know he's a black dude and he's a telemarketer and he has a quote-unquote white voice which is played by david cross oh it's not his real voice no okay it's, that's even funnier yeah which is <laughs> awesome because they adr'd it perfectly and there's another guy and that's it's uh played by Patton oswald hilarious it's also got tessa thompson She's Valkyrie and Thor. Yeah. She's in sure. Westworld. Terry Crews is in it. Danny Glover is in it. Oh. And he plays an excellent role. And he's he's also got a white people voice. Steven Yen from The Walking Dead. He plays a pretty good, pretty big role in it. And Army Hammer is just weird as fuck. I'm not going to go too deep into this because I don't want to ruin it. But I can call it a cautionary tale on selling your soul for cash. It's this universe that's set in Oakland, kind of like current day, and our dirt poor main character, whose name is Cassius, he goes by Cash, he can't catch a break. He takes a job as a telemarketer for this shitty company, and he makes only commissions, and Danny Glover is kind of teaching him how to use this white people voice. If you've seen the trailer, you know what this looks like, Uh, but he teaches him how to use this voice to make sales. It's hilarious to watch just because you see this black dude and David Cross's voice comes out of him. But the subplot, which is really important, and I can't spoil, but it's about this company called Worry Free, where you can sign a lifetime labor contract 
in exchange for them putting you up in housing and feeding you three meals a day. Damn. So it's basically kind of slavery. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's what communism is. Yeah. Lifetime yeah. labor? How do they... Lifetime contract. How this is not the weirdest that... part of this. All right. So well, I, I figure it. the weird part is how do you get out of that contract? You, you don't. don't. It's a lifetime well, contract. Well, somebody's going to want to get out of that agreement. So... so the public is torn on it. There are people who protest it and obviously people who sign up for it. I, oh, man, I really want to fucking tell you what happens, but I can't. Uh, the public has partial outrage about this and they call it slavery because that's pretty much what it is. But there's this progression for cash as he gets better and better as he uses a white people voice at better at sales and he starts selling questionable things, maybe to this worry free company. Maybe he's selling them labor and. Once you get to the third act of this movie, it is the single weirdest turn that I've ever seen in a good film. weird or bad weird. Good weird because it's so weird that you're just like, is it a weird where it just changes the whole genre of the movie? One hundred percent. So it goes from a like a slight comedy. It to goes from like being set a- in total reality to just astronomically stupid and weird. Okay, like something that could. But it doesn't get like ho- like a horror type feel no. to it. Like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't well, get to where they're like actually, killing everyone. Okay, okay. I this, I, I, like I kind of you, can see where you, this is going. Have I not, sold you on it? Yeah, I'm gonna I mean, go yeah, check I'm it out. I love movies like that where you think you know what the movie's going to be about, and then they just completely don't. even turn the whole there genre is, of the movie. Unless around. someone tells you what the twist is in this, there is no possible way you could see it coming. M Night Shyamalan style. Worse. Wow. But you know what, what you know what kind of movie you're getting to when you see an M9 channel on movie. You know yes, there's gonna you be know there's a twist. I was even so I forgot that split was a twist. And I was like, oh, all right, Bruce Willis, why are you fucking even here? Bruce Hilarious. Willis. Spoilers. I was so blown away that it reminded me of that one scene in Hereditary where my jaw dropped. Wow. And it's stayed down for ten minutes and I just didn't realize it yet. This is so worth seeing. I, it's the most original movie of the year thus far obviously okay. i'm gonna give it a seven and a half out of ten the the first two acts the comedy is kind of hit or miss but it's if you like weird shit this is so for you i might go see it tomorrow night actually do it there were probably not that many people in the movie theater to see this opening no night. which is a shame but it's also low budget so it'll it'll cover itself is, it'll be fine is this a movie where you walked out of the theater and as the day progressed and you thought more and more about it you yes. liked it more and more Eric, I, I came home and Erica's like, how was the movie? And I was like, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my review of Sorry to Bother You. It's awesome. How long is the movie? Uh, it's like an hour and 40. Okay. Not, Not terrible. Bad. It's yeah. Okay. I will say time. the best white person voice is hands down Dave Chappelle. Yeah, but that's Dave Chappelle is a white person. Uh, yeah. David Cross. I mean, imagine Tobias Funke. No, I understand. David Cross is a great white person, but as it's a black, the whitest voice that ever yeah, exists. As a black person doing a white person's yeah. voice, it's Dave Chappelle. Lock it in. Best of all time. <laughs> when I first heard Danny Glover's white voice, I thought it was Steve Buscemi, but apparently that wasn't the case. Also a great white people voice. It is. Speaking of Glover, Donald Glover wasn't in this movie, was he? He was not. Because when I, when I think of who's the main actor in this? Lakeith Stanfield. When I think Atlanta. of him, I think of just Atlanta. I yeah. love him in Atlanta. He is got a great my, character in Atlanta. He might be my favorite character in Atlanta. He is mine. So that's my... I'll go see uh, it. I'll shut up about Sorry to Bother You Now. I think that was cool. pretty good. Let's get into recommendations. Brick, you want to kick it off? I just have... Uh, check out the first Chump Shorty featuring me and Reverend Rogue, a.k.a. Games like Dean. To sell me on a porno right uh, yeah, I don't know if we're going to call it Chump Shorty, but... No, we, we are definitely not going to call it that. <laughs> YouTube channel, just checking it out. We're going to do a weekly episode, hopefully weekly, maybe bi-weekly. We're going to see how quickly Mark can turn these things out. Yeah, it's Mark that we wait on. Go check it out. That's yeah, what I'm talking you're about. also my best man alive for actually following up on something you said you a would do. A month later. A week a month later. <laughs> Dope. It's all right. we still Mark, what do you got? Uh, my recommendation of the week I would say I recommend just staying up to date, maybe even just following like Nerdist.com and see what's going on with San Diego Comic-Con this weekend because... Really? The- You're going to back that diddler? Huh? God damn it. Oh, you yeah. and your diddlers, dude. I'm not talking Chris Hardw- Hardwick. They denounced him from the whole website and they made a, a whole announcement. But also maybe check out like Screen Rant or io9 instead. What's your, what's your favorite pop culture news website? Uh, I, I like io9 and comicbookmovie.com 
Do you like comicbookmovie.com? Yeah. Is that the one? Is that the one where uh, sixty percent of the writers are full of shit half the time? I don't think so. I could be wrong. But also, my favorite, actually, sorry, Den of Geek. Den of Geek is awesome. They do great things you missed, Easter egg videos and stuff like that. Definitely Den of Geek. Mine's uh, Chuckload of Comics. Chuckload of Comics. A good friend of ours does awesome videos. My man knows his stuff. He does. Absolutely, check out his YouTube channel. San Diego Comic Con is going on right now. It is Thursday night, and it will be going on until Sunday. So it actually started Wednesday, but make sure you just stay up to date. There is going to be a lot of stuff releasing, a lot of trailers, a lot of sneak previews, teasers, a lot of just content in general, whether it's TV shows, movies, new comic books, etc. Make sure uh, you're you're just staying aware because you're going to be seeing a lot of stuff coming out on the social media. And we will recap it next week and give all our opinions on everything. Of course. That's what you're here for. How about you? Smith? I've been catching up on Dragon Ball Super. I'm behind. Oh, by the way, recommendation. Yeah, free downloads if you have Xbox. Microsoft oh, Store. Okay. You can download it for free. Dragon Ball Super. Okay. The whole for, the whole season. I was going to get into uh, the Broly trailer that dropped today. Oh, Broly. That looked amazing. His energy levels are off the charts. Broly was never. They do say canon. that about everyone. He was never also. like an actual Dragon Ball Z character. But oh, now they're going to introduce him and make an actual canon. This reminds me of like old school Dragon Ball Z Tree of Might movies and he stuff was, like that. He was a character though, but he wasn't really involved in GT. So he was early Dragon yeah. Ball Z. Well, he was only in movies. True. In the Dragon Ball Z movies. Yeah. It's kind of different, but this looks awesome. And I was so hesitant to think that it would be but man it really brought me back to those old school movies and the death metal that would just play in the middle of those battle scenes was so awesome that preview brought me back to sixth grade running home being like i gotta catch dragon ball z i'm maybe one of only a dozen people in the world that actually got a vhs recorder to work on a timer because i had basketball practice what and i couldn't get home in time for it to 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 watch it so i had to vhs to i had this this tape was worn out because every day I was taping DBZ. Damn, that is commitment. That's a fucking process to do that. Those were my favorite action figures growing up. Out of all the fi- action figures I would collect, from Transformers to Street Sharks, all that shit. Sick. Dragon Ball Z action figures, because they had Gargoyles. everyone, they all had different shit about them, like a removable cape or removable shoulder pads for Vegeta, all that shit. And... All of them were Mark's just... Un, Mark's undressed. Dude, I'm so freaking out because I'm going to go home and grab him right now. Like, I had the Vegeta where half of his shoulder pad is ripped off. Like, they had all these different versions of each of them. But anyways, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z takes pants. me back. I love Brawly. I'm going to f- see this Broly. fucking movie. <laughs> I love Brawly. Brawly is the Chicago guy in me. All right? I'm going to call him Brawly until I fucking die, it dude. Was, it wasn't matter. Fucking Goku. <laughs> Gaku. No. Brawly. Broly? Broly. <laughs> no, now he doesn't know anymore. He's like, wait, wait, is it Broly? Broly? No, it's Broly. Broly, Broly is no, my fucking is. dude ass. Yo, Broly on the trolley. <laughs> Sick. Let's Great. go. I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Thanks for tuning in to episode 101. Skeet. Uh, our question for next week, if you want to get a hold of us, is what stupid stunt wouldn't Tom Cruise do on the set of a Mission Impossible movie? You can find us on social media at the Chumpcast or call or text us at 847 920 6107. Until next time. Peace. Chumps out, motherfucker!